I'm going to review this Siglent power supply. I'm going to put it on my load tester and make sure it meets its specs and see how well it performs, make sure it can actually do the things it says it can do, and I expect it can. So if you want to see how well that goes, watch the video. Make sure you subscribe. Right, this power supply is loaned to me by Rob, Tabacker Technologies, as you can see here, if you're in New Zealand, that's who you want to see. Um, so thanks a lot Rob for lending that to me. I've done a bunch of Siglent reviews recently, so make sure you check out my recent videos for the reviews. And um, I've reviewed a 350MHz oscilloscope, I'll be doing an SVA next. Um, I've done a IF signal generator, and obviously I'm doing a power supply now. So if you're interested in Siglent gear, those kinds of things, just check out my other videos. Now, onto this thing. So this is a 30 volt, 5 amp power supply rated at 150 watts. It's a linear supply. So it means it's uh, not switch mode, so you don't get the same kind of noise levels you get on the outputs of switch mode because it's linear, so it's much cleaner. It also means it's got inherent isolation. As you can see, it's got four terminals on the front here. All right, so it's got sense terminals as well as the output terminals and a dedicated earthing post. So it's a nice little supply. I've actually purchased myself um, a similar version. Now, I did a review on the 1968X. I've done a review on that um, some time ago. And I ended up purchasing that power supply from Rob because I actually liked it so much. I bought it off him. And I needed a supply at the time, so it just made sense just to keep hold of it. That video is going to be very similar to this one. Obviously, it's got different output ratings and stuff like that, and a slightly high power rating. If you're looking at more at the 1168X than the, than the 1305X, then I'm only go and check out the other um, video I did in that one. I'll probably link it up there, or definitely down, down the description. I'll definitely put it down there. So read the description if, it's, if you're looking for that. Watch it after this video, not now. Go and watch it after, because this might tell you what you need to know anyway. Some details about this thing. Obviously, I say it's the SPD1305X. It's 30 volt, 5 amps, 150 watt, as already mentioned. It has a five-digit voltage display, a four-digit current display, with one, one millivolt and one milliamp resolution. That's a 2.8-inch display. Um, as I mentioned, it's, it's got four wire and two wire modes, so you can actually do it either way around. You don't have to use all four. That's what the V-Sense button's for in front here. So you can turn it on and off as you need it. It's got a fan on it, obviously, but it's a temperature control fan, so it only ramps up and down as it needs to, so to keep the noise levels down, which is quite nice. The display can actually give you a waveform output, so it shows you the current and loading on the supply, so you can actually see what it's doing there. A little graphical display, you can see that on there. Um, you can store and recall up to five memories, so it's got five memory positions on it, and it runs with easy power software on PC, as accepts Skippy commands and LabVIEW driver software as well. I don't know if it's got the web server software in it. I'm not sure it has. I have to go and look into that. I'm gonna, I'll try that out once I've got the thing powered up. But um, I know some of the other signal devices have got web server, but I think that might be not on this unit. I will find out. So don't hold me to that. So the first thing we should do, spin it around, look at the back side. It's got little AC power options for different regions. So it's all built into the unit. You just flick the switches around to see what you're doing. Now I'm on 240 volts, so the closest thing to me is 230 which means I need to have this switch over there. That one's in the correct position. So the current setting is for 220 volt. Well, I need 230, so I need to switch that over. This is why this is here, to make sure that when you first buy the unit, you correctly set the power setting, just in case it's not set for your country. So that's a nice little touch by Siglent to make sure that's correct. I'm going to swap this over now. Let's get something to push that with. So you want 230, which is over there. All right, so there, there. That's 230 volt, definitely right. So you can peel this sticker off. I might leave it on there actually for Rob just to, because it is a brand new unit, it's on loan, so I'm going to take it right off. Let's get a power supply down here. So as you can see on the back, it's also got a USB and a LAN connection as well. Also, you need those for the software. So you can use either one of those to talk to the device. Let's power it up. Now this has got a hard power switch, which is what I quite like actually. I quite like hard power switches. Um, I actually prefer a hard power switch to a soft power switch to myself. Um, I just, I just don't like the fact that when you've got something which is soft power, it's always consuming power, even if it's turned off. It's still sitting there. The power supply is energized. I don't actually like that aspect. So I actually prefer a hard power switch. I mean, a lot of gear these days is soft power, but um, I prefer having a nice clunking switch. It's powered up. As you can see the display there. 
So it's currently showing four digits of voltage, but because it's only set zero, it's not going to show the fifth digit because it's a leading zero otherwise. So obviously they inhibit that. So you can see the set in the actual for voltage and current. It also gives you a wattage reading as well. It does have a timer function. This is not a touch screen, by the way. I'll point that out. So I keep forgetting to check on devices I'm looking at because nowadays touch screens are coming in and people are using them. And um, I keep forgetting that devices could be touch screen. Anyway, this isn't. So you've got this arrow here which jumps around different different regions. So it changes what setting you're doing. So push that button in the knob there, it switches the range. Go to the current. Let's uh, make that full current. 5 amps. So the Yo 150 watts is what it's capable of producing right now. So it actually tells you what it's capable of doing. And also right now there's nothing on. We'll turn the output on. That's what it's currently generating. Alright, so 30 volts. No current, no wattage because I've got nothing connected up to it. So things we should actually look at is things like the accuracy of the output. So this says 30.04. Okay, so what I might do is get my signal six and a half digit meter down here as well, which you won't be able to see on screen, but I can just probe it and just do a comparison. That says exactly 30 volts. So that's 30.0014. Bear in mind I've just turned it on, so it's obviously got a settling period as well. So this is actually slightly out, so don't believe the EV bulb meter. <laughs> Dave, what have you done? Anyway, <laughs> it's it's a Brightman meter, with this Dave's name on it. So that is actually, as my bench meter is warming up, it's actually getting more accurate. So it's 30.001 right now. The output is accurate as per my bench meter. Show my bench meter is like right up there, you can't see it. It's a bit out of shot, so just bear in mind this is slightly off. And I guess it's a ballpark figure on it. So it's timer function as well. And in here, you can set a voltage, current, and a time as well. And it will step through each one to do like a test sequence. So as you can see, it steps through the first one. So you can do each step. You can set it to whatever you want. And I'll do like one volt there. And then do, oh, current, let's do 100 millivolts. And let's do, no. Do five seconds, shall we? And then go to the next one. We might do two volts, do 100 millivolts again, doesn't matter. Do that for five seconds again. Then we'll do okay, three volts. Just want to demonstrate this. Right, so you can actually here, see on the display here, it's graphing out what it's going to do. Alright, so if I were to actually go over here and make that something different. Oh, let's turn it on. Hmm. Okay, I thought I could push that and actually change the scaling. Well, I think you can also do it with the buttons by pushing the buttons. Also goes up and down too. I'm not sure we're going to do that when I get that anyway, but anyway, right. Fine. Oh, there we go. Push the fine button. That's what changes it. There we go. That's better. Wish it was a bit more. What, why does the user interface change? Super, you need to change that. So if you normally if you're in other display, if you're in this one, you're pushing this. Um, let's pick up something. Right, so you push that and it changes where you are. Right, that's fine. That's simple, nice and easy. Why doesn't the same thing work here? Why do you have to use a different button to do the same thing? Super, that's a bad user interface thing. You need to look at that. Swap them around. Swap them around this bit, not the other one. Anyway, right. So let's wind this up. I can go downwards as well. Right. So, so I'm going to do 1, 2, then 30. 5 seconds of each one. Okay. So, then push that to start, do I? Yes, I do. So, I'm doing 1 volt now. I'll do it 5 seconds. Then I'll step to 2 volts. Do it 5 seconds. Gives you a countdown as well how, much, how far through the process it is. And it's gone to 30 volts. 5 seconds. And then it turns off. Obviously, what you're seeing is this uh, capacitor discharge. I actually wish that the on-off symbol up here was more obvious, like, I don't know, red and green or something to stand out more. I mean, it's a colour display. It would be nice to actually see in a different, um, it's just highlighting that more. I mean, obviously you've got a button which lights up, but anyway, I'm waffling a bit, aren't I? So, let's keep looking. So we've got that. Fine Control also does that too. Hmm. Okay. So maybe... 
Maybe that button push should be used to jump ranges instead. The fine button will work on here and in the timer. So maybe the fine button is the one you're supposed to use to do that. Okay, that makes sense. In which case, maybe they shouldn't make this button here do the same function because that's confusing. They should, if they make that change positions down to the next one down, you could also do the same thing on this one, maybe. Or um, make it so that turns the power supply on and off. There's a nice convenient way you change the setting, bang, done. My signal is saying exactly 30. My six and a half digit meter, all right? So I'm gonna show you that right now. I'm not gonna even stop recording. I'm just gonna move this up here. and try to tip it back so you can see it. It's up there somewhere. There you go. All right, sorry it's not in focus, but sorry about the really shorty camera work. There you go. So that's what my six and a half digit meter thinks of it. I wanted to do it in one shot just to prove it wasn't changing something halfway between or something, alright? Now this does have multiple transformer taps, you can hear it switching taps as it's going through ranges. So with the output on, if I um, go back up to back up to that one, this one should be up and down, arrows not left and right, and we'll wind this down, we'll listen to the transformer swapping. There you go. It's got some hysteresis there too. So go from 24 down to 23 it switches, but 24 to 25 it switches. So there's some hysteresis there, so there's some overlap. So it doesn't, if it's on a threshold, it won't flutter on the relays, trying to you know figure out which one it should be using. So it's because the hysteresis is an overlap between the the windings, which is great because it means that um, you know it's it's actually been designed that way. Where's the next one? Up there. 17, 16. Let's try a finer setting. Yes, there is history, so there we go. Just a different amount. So 16.5 and 16 to. So 16 to 16, well 16.1 down to 16, 16.4 to 16.5. So there is hysteresis here, just a smaller window. Not sure any other taps are right. I'm presuming, yep, yeah, there's another one, there we go. So going upwards, 7.9 to 8, and going downwards, 7.8 down to 7.7. .7. So again, hysteresis. So it's good to actually designing that in. And they're allowing for that overlap there because that's a um, a good aspect. I'm not sure if everybody else does it. I think that's probably it. I don't think there's any more taps. Yeah, that's it. Let's do some other stuff. Turn the output off. Also, you've got the four wire measurement as well, so you can turn the vSense on, and that'll measure the output terminals. You can have a. Um, it does have internal sensing as well, I believe. I think you have like one volt difference in sensing or something like that, maximum compensation. Version information, so this is about the unit, its software version, which is currently 7R1 at the end there. Start with times two, because I played it the first time around, and this is the second time I've started recording. Lock, which means you can actually lock the controls, so you hold the button down. Little lock, lock symbols come up on the corner of the display there. And so that means it locks the controls, you can't do anything unless you unlock it again. So it's not, you know, if you're doing something sensitive, you don't want to accidentally change a setting and over voltage something, then um, you, know, you can lock it and make sure it's all safe. Wave is the upper waveform. So it'll track that. And you can also set the outputs along here as well, and do the same thing here. So you can adjust them here as well. So it's giving two displays, voltage and current. And obviously the one you can see here is the voltage, because I've just ground that up. And the current is sitting right at the bottom there because it's got no loading on it. No loading at all. So we'll do some testing on that when I get my load on it. IP and save. Let's have a look first. So IP is for using the uh, the LAN interface, so you connect it up to a computer or your network. So this is where you put the settings in here, it has DHCP turned on as well. 
So I want to actually hook this up to my network and actually try it out and see if I can use a web server interface. I don't know if it has one on it, um, as I said before. So if it's got one, then we'll have a look at it. If it doesn't, I won't have a look at it because I don't have a PC here. I'm using a Mac. My PC's somewhere else right now, so I can't actually test that out. Saving. Let's have a look at saving. So it's holding the button down, obviously, because what it says, long push. So you've got five... Uh, you can do that because it's storing and recall. So you use the same menu, it looks like, to do both. So it's a little thing. Scroll it around like that. Change, choose which one you're going to save it as. What do we get to network? Store. Data will be stored. Okay. So success. Excellent. So if I want to, oh, let's cancel that. I want to do it. back there. File choices choose. So here you can also see now. It's changed colour. Obviously, that designates that there's something stored in that file. It's a shame you can't name them, but it's probably a bit complicated in a little display like this. You know, with limited interface as well. Probably a bit hard to name them. So, as long as you remember which one you want, it's probably alright. That's fine, we'll get it out of there. Nice little 3 cents thing, so now that shows us full wire. And constant voltage. Obviously, when the current limiting kicks in, then it will drop to go to constant current when the current limiting is reached. So we need to put a load on this and, and um, do some more testing after that. So we'll be back soon. So I think for this voltage sense option for this, which is for the four wire, I believe what it does it's sensing if there's any voltage on those terminals because it's got a one volt maximum difference. So I think if there's nothing connected to those terminals, it will it will continue to use the internal sensing. So what I think is going on with this V sense thing here to go to four wire. If you don't have anything on these load terminals, it is compensating. But it's not showing a compensation, it's just it's doing it max as most compensations it can do, which I think is half a volt in each direction. So it's one volt max, I think it said on the in information. If I turn VSense on, so you can see here the voltage has increased by half a volt. But it's still saying 30 volts on here. Don't I've got nothing connected to those sense terminals. So it's compensating for a voltage being low. But only within a certain limit. Yeah, so I've got half of yeah. So the reading I'm getting here is what I'm getting on that sense terminal. So there's probably some tying inside the unit, which is tying those two terminals together. 1.7 volts that side. Let's try that one side. Half a volt that side. So there we go. So, so yeah, there must be the way that it's tied internally. So it's got some kind of internal fallback sensing. So the most it will be out by is half a volt if you don't have any connected to those terminals. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my load test hooked up. I'm just using the same leads because they're convenient. They should be able to take the current I'm doing here. We'll see how we go. If they can start getting warm on that account. What we'll do, I just want to do some basic accuracy tests first. I mean, this is not 100% accurate. It's, it's close. And I'm not going to take this as gospel. We're just going to give us a ballpark figure make sure it looks kind of right. If I need to, I can always hook up my signal. Um, multimeter as well in series and just measure the current and stuff like that too. In fact I probably will do that actually. The first thing I want to do is I want to do 10 volts, 5 amps, that's 50 watts, it's a much lower rating. Right, this can do 300 watts so this can handle it just fine, it's not a problem. So I'll turn the power on first. Okay so it's outputting 10 volts. This is seeing 10.1. Um, get my signal Six and a half digit, and just probe on there and see what we're getting there as well to see what that thinks of it. 10.16 is what the signal says, so that's slightly off, not much. I really should calibrate this thing actually. It does say there's a potential um, margin, I think it's what was it, 0.03% plus 10 millivolts or something like that. I think it was the voltage accuracy of the power supply, but I guess it depends on what voltage range you're in, which winding it's using, that sort of stuff. I'm not sure about calibration of this actually. I don't know if there's any way of calibrating this. Be interested to find out if it's possible. So I've got 10 volts here. This is set for 3 amp draws, so that's set for 5 amps. So this should be able to turn this load on and the power supply will generate the power and carry on. So there we go. Drawing 3 amps, 10 volts there. Voltage on this thing has dropped slightly, but it's doing 29.17 watts, it's doing 30 watts. So let's check voltage again on here to see what's going on. 
9.73 volts. So yes, there is that much voltage drop across these cables. So they're not perfect cables for this. Now what I could do to compensate for that is use the sense terminals and hook those up and see what's going on. So I'll come back after I've done that. I think I made a mistake when I was recording the first bit. I still had vSense turned on. So that voltage would have actually been a bit higher. So I've turned the load back off here. Let's measure that again. Yeah, that's 10.01 volts now, or 001 volts. That's actually accurate. That's why it was wrong before, because, um, and this is pretty much correct too, because I still had the vSense turned on. So that vSense is obviously proportional to the voltage that's been set. So before I was getting half a volt at 30 volts, now I'm getting much less than that. So I'll turn the vSense back on again. Now I'm, I've got it hooked up now too. So turn it back on. That's annoying, signal, so turn it off. So if you push vSense, it just stays on. That's annoying. Come on. Now I've got vSense turned on. And we're still getting 10.006. Verify it on the meat on the signal, 10.001. So yep, that's fine. So it's actually well within the spec because it's which is was it 0.03 plus 10 millivolts or something. So it's well within the spec. Okay, so turn the load on. And it's now compensating for the load. So we're now getting 9.993 on there. I'll check it on the on the signal digit, 9.995. So this is you know very slightly different to what my signal off digit meter saying, but it's close enough for what you're doing. So that's compensating just fine. It's saying 29.98 watts, so 30.033. So there is a slight discrepancy there, just very slight. So, you know, is it, is it an issue? Probably not. You know, it may, it may or may not matter to you. But that's doing 3 amps, and that's saying basically 3 amps. So I think that was also, that had a spec for the current rating as well. I think that was. Um, plus 0.3% plus 10 millivolts, I think it was. I might have to go and look that up. It was something like that. Yeah, I think it's 0.3. Let's wind the voltage up. So maximum voltage, maximum current, 150 volts. Let's crank this on. That's only doing 3 amps still, so that's okay. It's not going to be topping out. So 90 watts here, doing 90 watts here. All right, so again, the compensation is working. we we'll turn off the compensation. then we're getting about 370 millivolt drop or something like that. So, that is annoying, signal. Fix that. Just allow vSense switching without turning the power supply off. Let's see what's happening. Well, let's crank it up. The fan is ramped up very slightly, it's only running a little bit. This also has a fan, so you know, don't confuse the two noises. Increase the current. So, current set. Five. Enter maximum loading. So there we go. Right on the threshold of what I can do. So it's obviously just going slightly over five. Let's drop down a little bit. There we go. So now the fan that's ramping up. Obviously because of the voltage drop across here this is compensating so it's actually effectively going slightly over 150 watts by the cost of the compensation of then going through these cables and wait if you say. So it's 4.9 that's what it's doing. 495. 494, 495, there we go. Let's see. Obviously, there's a slight voltage difference between the two. One thinks it's 150 watts, and the other one thinks 150 watts are not necessarily the same thing. There we go, it's just coming out there. So there you go. So I'm maxing it out. And it's doing it right there. So it's 499.91 uh, watts. So it's basically full output. Hasn't gone bang. That's always a good thing. That's as much low as I can do. And it does actually protect itself and if it goes over load. So let's go that down to uh, current set. Let's do 3 amps. It takes the loading off this thing again. Let it relax a little bit. And if I come over here. And wind that back down as well. You can probably hear that fan there winding up now, as it's calling. Actually, I can hear this one coming up now, too. So, noise-wise, it's actually pretty quiet. It doesn't make that much noise, unless you put a lot of loading onto it. So, what I might do here is wind it up and just see when we get to it. There we go.
see, this sensor is overloaded, it shuts the output off, it's current limiting, so the voltage drops right down, the current is still there. But the, because the, current, the voltage dropped down, the, the wattage has dropped. Drop the voltage down a little bit on here, or the current down on here a little bit. Just go back to the threshold, you can manage it again, and off we go. Barely, it's right on that threshold. All right, so yeah, that's fine. Now it's all working the way you expected to work. All good. Okay, so now I put my six and a half digit siglant in series with the load. I'm just using one amp loading right now on here, just a nice round number. Still got 30 volts set, so it should be generating you know, 1.004 amps according to this. And my siglant is saying 1.0014. So I'll show you that. Let's that shorty camera work again. There you go. That's what the siglant says. So that is looking pretty accurate indeed. I mean, the specs are. I think it says plus 10 milliamps or something. Point zero, is it plus? Plus or minus 0.3% plus 10 milliamps. I think that's what the spec said. Memory. I could be remembering it wrong. So let's try a different current. Let's try. Let's just max it out, shall we? Let's just do. Oh, no, I want to do five. Let's do. Um, let's do four, actually. Let's just. Uh, I don't know. Four amps. Four. Enter. Alright, so it's doing. 4 amps now, 4.06 or so on there. My signal is saying 4.001. So again, within spec. That looks good. Yeah, that's all fine. Happy with that. So now I'm going to show you this waveform thing on here. So if I turn the load back on again, so you can see it's showing the, this constant voltage there, and it's also showing the current in the other waveform. So as I change the current setting, you'll see that stepping up and down in line with that current range. All right, so it shows you what's actually happening on the loading. I don't know how good the resolution is if I go up and down too much. I'm going too far now. Change it by 100 milliamps at a time. Let's change it by 100 milliamps right there. 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5. So you can see the steps there, 100 milliamps. Go down to 50, uh, yeah, 10 milliamps at a time. You can barely see it there. All right, so the resolution on the screen for doing those kinds of small current sensings aren't great. It's like it's probably maybe half a um, half a pixel or something. Let's just look at this again. So it's 2.7 right there. 2.71. 2.72. 2.73 is there, hasn't changed, 2.74, no, 2.75, now it's changed. So the 10 milliamps on here, which you can't see because I'm off camera right now, um, is actually less than a pixel on the display, so you can't see those ranges Go, going up until we see another pixel change. There. That's 2.79. So each pixel is 40 milliamps. In case it helps you. Okay. So that's that part. If I go over current, you should see the um, the voltage drop instead. So the current will, will max out. So current is a green line, which will then be across the top. And voltage is now dived down the bottom there. So that's voltage and that's current up there now. Okay, because I've got the voltage set maximum, it's not <laughs> easy to see. Let's go back to. Um, I'll do it in there. Uh, yes, I can do it in there. Can I? There. So let's set, say, 20 volts. Here you go. It might be easy to see difference there. I'm going to max the current out again. So we're stepping up, one amp at a time, and then overload. You can see the voltage dive a bit clearer, isn't it? So yeah, so that's what the graphing can do. See, so if you're trying to monitor something which has a moderate power draw, um, that might be helpful. Just to set this up, I'll show you. Well, I've already done some settings on it, but if you want to change settings in here, you use that to change curve position. You use this to change where you are, right? And you use the dial to change the actual values. All right? Oh, I just destroyed that one. Anyway, I'll 
two by five. Now that you commit it, you can't just go back out and say, right, it's done. Right, you go back in there, the scenes are still there, sure, but it's not actually saved on here. I've done it already, but but what we have to do is push that. When you push that, that enters it and that saves it in there. So when you go back in there again after you've repowered it, that's the settings it's using. Otherwise, this is what's actually using up here. So if, if this doesn't match what you've got here, you have to push this button. Thought I'd mention that. Obviously, DHCP you can turn it on off as well if you want to. That one of two page is a bit confusing. What it actually means is the um, the save feature, right? Which is page two of two, right? So you can switch between the two like that. That's what that means, but. The timer wave button doesn't have that, that mission on there, but this one does. It makes it a bit confusing. You think, oh, what's the second network settings page? But there isn't one. Anyway, just in case you get confused by that. So I'll just try the web interface on this thing using the IP settings we've got saved in here. And um, there's no web server in it. So obviously it depends on the power of the processor that's in this thing, whether it can run a web server on it. Who knows? Um, Siglin, I suggest, if you watch this video, I expect you will. If it's possible to stick a web server on this thing, can you look into it? Because I think it'd be a really good little thing to do. It's, it'd be good to have your entire range with web servers built into them. If it can do it, I mean, it may be that it can't do it. I, I really don't know. Um, the fact it can accept skippy commands means it's probably not going to be that hard to do it. But, um, I don't know. Cyclone, please look into that. It'd be great. But, obviously it's got the easy power software, which you use on PC. And it accepts skippy commands and uses the LabVIEW driver as well. So it does have remote control using the LAN and using the USB. It does have that capability. Just not the web server aspects right now. But just like the power supply I reviewed previously, the 1168X, um, which I ended up purchasing, this is a good little supply. I mean, it certainly performs well. It's within its spec. It can, it's got the ranges it's supposed to do. It's, it's quiet. I mean, right now it's ticking along. Almost no noise from whatsoever. Because the fans ran back down again after that testing. I'm tempted to open up and do a comparison, but I'm not going to. Um, it's got a seal on the side. On. I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm not going to open it up. It's not mine, don't forget. It's on loan. I haven't specifically asked Rob if I can open it up. I could do, but I'm not going to bother. It's going to be so similar to the previous one. So if you want to see what the inside this looks like, look at the review I did for the SPD 1168X because it will show what the inside looks like. It'll be, I imagine it's going to be basically identical. It's probably just some different windings on transformers and slightly different configurations. It's probably what it is. If you enjoyed that, make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon, share the video with your friends or on social media, anyone that might be interested in it. Comment down below, I'd like to hear what your, your comments are and your, your feedback and have some discussions. I do like to have discussions with people, I want to hear what you have to say. So please do that, and uh, give us a thumbs up too if you liked it. If you, didn't, if you didn't like it, give us a thumbs down, sure, but make sure you put in the comments why you gave it a thumbs down. I don't like seeing thumbs down without a reason for it, because give me a thumbs down doesn't tell me what's wrong. You know, if you don't tell me what you think is wrong with the video, I can't fix it. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Another good unit from Signal. Excellent. I don't know. Well, if you want to turn it off and change it, I'm waffling again, aren't I? Waffle, waffle, waffle. Let's run that threshold again. Can't set 4.8. It's not doing that, is it? Um, set it, that's why. Idiot. Okay, 4.8. There we go.